Peter, we've talked about a number of things over the years, but this is the first time we've talked about the Modern Slavery Act. Yep. Can you tell me why this is so timely, please? Canada and other Western nations have been working with the United Nations to reduce forced labor and child labor. When we talk about slavery, that's what we mean, forced labor or child labor. And there are United Nations proclamations to which Canada is a uh, signatory, but this is the first time that Canada has come out with modern day anti-forced labor and anti-child labor uh, legislation. Obviously, there's a real time essence here, but let's talk about first about who's affected, because you might be surprised. You might actually need to change what you're doing later this afternoon. Right. So the deadline is May 31st this month. That's important to keep in mind. Who's affected? Well, there are uh, financial tests. What's your revenue? What's your asset base? But one of the tests is, are you listed on a Canadian stock exchange? Full stop. If you're listed on a Canadian stock exchange, you must file a report with the federal government by May 31 in this month. Many, you... company, many companies I've spoken to do not, are not aware of this, or they've talked to their legal counsel who say, I've never heard of this. Don't worry about it, which is a horrible, horrible answer. Well, let me ask you, that was the question I inadvertently interrupted you with. Was where does a company find, you know, where did they receive the notice that they had to turn this around? Where was the information distributed? This information has been in the public domain for a number of years, both with the draft legislation and then the final legislation and then the royal assent, which was given in January of this year. Uh, but surprisingly, I've received very few notices, either from the big law firms or the big accounting firms, who are usually all over this kind of thing, announcing it. I'm very surprised by the relative paucity of times that I've received information on this. So I can understand why people are feeling, you know, terrified. I see here that failure to comply with the act can result in fines of up to a quarter of a million dollars, criminal prosecution, and reputational damage. Can you talk to us about this? So it's not only the company that can be fined. Pursuant to the statute, each individual director and a controlling member of management can be fined and prosecuted in the courts. So think of it as uh, environmental legislation, where you need to have a due diligence defense if you're going to be charged with this. And a due diligence defense means you completed the form on time and you didn't just fluff the form out. You actually investigated your supply chain. You've changed your board policies. You've changed your management policies to specifically embrace being aware of the risk of human uh, forced labor and child labor, documenting that you've investigated it, and then compiling the report to be submitted to the government by May 31st of this year. The report goes to, you'll love this, the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness and the form must be submitted by May 31. Okay, for everybody out there who are looking for more advice on how to deal with this, please go to the following website or send an email to Peter Clausey at the email listed below. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. This is an important topic, so thank you for the time.